Hey everyone, welcome back to Northwest Craftsman. Today I'm going to be trying something a little bit different as I build my workbench where instead of talking you guys through the whole process and sharing my thoughts all the way through, I'm going to go ahead and just be quiet and do the work and let you watch me as I'm doing it. When I get to the end of the project or I get to the end of the day, I'll share some of my thoughts with you and some of the things that I've learned so that hopefully you guys don't make the same mistakes that I did. At any rate, here you go. Enjoy. <music> Thank you. 
Hey guys, thanks for joining me on part one of building my workbench. I hope that you enjoyed it as much as I did. Uh, in the effort for continuous learning, there was a couple of things that I learned. One, it is really important to anchor your parts when you're hand planing them. At the start of this project, I was sitting on them as I, as I uh, set the two by fours between two milk crates and then anchored it all right. But as you can see in the video, it's very easy for your hand plane to grab it and slide it. So one of the things that I started doing towards the end of it, especially when you don't have a workbench, a big heavy workbench, which is what I'm building, to anchor your parts down to, if you take a four x four, you can clamp your parts down to that four x four and it will give you a decent anchor if you're also on top of it to keep it from sliding around. Again, this is only really a temporary fix if you have literally nothing that you can anchor this down to. If you have an old workbench, that's probably better than what I was doing. The second thing that I learned is that hand planing uh, dulls your blade pretty quickly. Or it may not dull your blade pretty quickly, but having a sharp plane makes a really big difference. And so it may seem like a lot of work to take your plane apart, sharpen the blade, get it back together, and then start planing again, but it really doesn't take that much time and you get pretty good at it. 
The third thing that I learned is that being choosy about your wood is pretty important. When I was at Home Depot, I went through about a, a unit and a half of two by fours as I was looking for ones that were just right for my workbench. And the things that I were looking for that I was looking for is clear lumber, so lumber that doesn't have a lot of knots or other defects to it, and then also straight lumber. So there's some forms of warp that you can actually clamp out in your workbench, but there's a lot of forms of warp that you can't. Uh, that you can't clamp out. And so you really got to look for those. The types of warp that have the uh, long edge, well, I'll post a link to a photo in my description and it'll be a little bit easier to describe, but there's some forms of warp that you can uh, clamp out and there's other forms of warp that you really can't. The fourth thing that I learned is that when I was gluing this all together, things go really quickly. And so I would recommend uh, doing it in smaller chunks than I did it. I try to do the entire bench all in one go, and I would probably do it in two or three separate chunks because it makes it easier to get the glue onto all the different surfaces evenly, to get it clamped down, to get it nice and tight, and to uh, really make sure that everything lines up nicely. And then that way you're also not in quite as big of a rush. One of the other pieces that came out of this, and I'd say this is probably the fifth thing that I learned, is that when you have something that is this large that you're gluing together and you kind of do need as much glue as I put onto it, is A, get more glue than you expect you're going to need. I went through almost a gallon of glue just for this workbench. But then B, just have something underneath it so that it can drip on. I should have started from the other side, uh, from the other side of my clamps than I did, because then when I set the finished pieces of lumber vertical, the glue would just drain down the uh, uh, down between the boards and it would drip onto the floor, which would be fine to some extent uh, if I had just laid my tarp all the way out. But then even then, I ended up having to throw the tarp away because I couldn't get the glue off of it. And so I would recommend just getting some painter's plastic, which is really cheap, or uh, in one of my other videos, I showed that you can actually just chip the paint off of the concrete pretty well. And so if you're not opposed to that, that is another option for you. At any rate, those are some of the things that I learned in today's uh, build. I hope that you enjoyed it just as much as I did. And uh, as always, if you enjoy this content, you want to see the rest of this workbench, you want to see the other videos that I put on, please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. And also follow us on Instagram where I post a lot more intermediate updates as I'm building the this thing. Okay, thank you very much. Have a great day, you guys. Bye.